welcome back mentally ill today's video is about a woman who checked in the hospital because sorry she has cancer and does not check out the hospital it has nothing to do with her cancer it's a crazy ride from start to finish and a lot of stupid decisions were made like sniffing needles you will know exactly what that's about as you continue watching also there might be like you could see you could hear a change in the audio from the intro to the actual video that's because my dumbass forgot to make sure the mic was on so this intro has the mic while the video has just my camera's audio so i'm a dumbass but you can still hear us so being said subscribe turn on that bell Boom. follow us on instagram at official spooky juice and make sure you follow us on twitter at spooky Buds. and enjoy today's video we have a word from our sponsors spooky juice. october 17th and 18th we will be having an official launch party for spooky to ten dollars if you wear a costume please wear a costume let's be spooky together don't don't hold out on us we got our hats you bring your costume you could be batman if i'm with anything just right. show up as a costume and for ten dollars only you got to well for fifteen dollars only too if you don't bring your costume if you decide to be lame but you get um food we will not starve you and also non-alcoholic drinks so we not we will not dehydrate you right so we believe in water you will drink responsibly in the home of spooky buttons right but you had all that to come party chill have a good time and try all of our drinks before we launch them to the public to, right. for the consumers to buy and besides you could meet us who wouldn't want to meet us right with that being said, let's get into it. This one's not as dark as last week. It's fucked up, but it's not. It's not dark. So, are you ready for this? On February 19th, 1994, at 8.15 p.m., Oh. Like oh. A woman by the name of Gloria Ramirez was brought to the ER by paramedics, right? Okay. Before I even start the story, a week prior to this whole situation, she was diagnosed with cervical cancer. So this woman's life is already going south. So just keep in mind, she just got told she has cervical cancer. So. That's rough. Right? Don't fuck this woman. But so, they bring her into the ER because she's basically... It's kind of like she's having a heart attack. Oh, okay. Because she can't speak. She, when you try to talk to her, it's just like mutters. Right? So they're like, wow, this woman's really fucking sick. Imagine being so sick you can't talk. I've been there. I'm like, what would you... I, I've never had cancer, so I can't imagine what that's about like. About to say, like I've never been like, like I mean, I've been sick where like I, it hurts to talk, but to actually like no words come out your mouth it only happens to me like if I have a sore throat, you know. So I can't imagine just like how sick you were. I was like, just in pain, bro. Like it was saying. just utter pain. Like, so she comes in, and the doctors are kind of just confused, cause she's having all these symptoms, but like at the same time she's still like communicating with them a little bit how is she gonna talk so it's like she goes from mutters to like regular conversation oh cute gordon <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but like her symptoms just start to get worse like she starts like having fucking like rapid breath and like her heart rate goes from like like let's say 20 beats to like 100 in like a second oh damn that's can y'all have a stroke when that happens or like a heart attack some shit like that yeah because your heart's beating so fast that like your body and like it bursts out yeah. of your chest it's like pause nigga too much now 
So they see this woman's obviously sick. And they're like, let's do like regular protocols because we don't know what's wrong with her. Give her Wait, cat is this in the US? Yeah. Okay. So this story takes place in California. Oh, I, okay. And she was taken to Riverside General Hospital. Okay. But so as a hospital would, they're like, we gotta run some tests. <coughs> Okay. Let's get this woman a CAT scan. <coughs> smart, smart. So they do the CAT scan, and basically it kind of looks normal. Like they can see that like her brain's going through some shit. Okay. But it's relatively normal. So they're like, let's get some blood work for this lady. Cause maybe her iron's low. Oh, keep in mind the whole time they're doing this, they have no idea she has cancer. Oh. What did the CAT scan show that she has cancer? Because she has cervical. They were doing it on her brain. Oh, okay. Um, that makes sense. Okay. But so, finally, they're like, you know what? The best way to do this is let's get her some blood work done. So this nurse comes in, and she's like, basically, it took her, like, a moment to, like, establish the situation a little bit. Okay. But she goes to draw the blood, and upon putting the syringe into this lady's arm... She said that there was a foul odor, just like filling the area, kind of like ammonia. Okay. So she, so she's with the doctor and she's basically like voicing that like, hey, I don't think this is normal. (laughs) Like the patient's blood smells like ammonia. Maybe we should look into that. Um, that's kind of like, imagine it's like doing someone's blood work and like, yo, this smells like bleach. (laughs) What the fuck you mean it smells like bleach? Like. That's crazy. Someone, yo, someone, yo, go get the other doctor. You're not gonna believe this shit. <laughs> this lady's blood smells like bleach. <laughs> like, they finally deduce it as you're having a stroke because you swallow bleach. Was this a suicide? Like, was this attempted suicide and now you came here? Because <laughs> you survived somehow and this is how your blood smells like bleach. But she gives this to like the head nurse. Okay. And she's like, yo, you should come smoke this dude, like this lady's blood. And he's, the minute he walks into the room, he said the odor was there. And he literally you know, uh, said it smelled smells straight so- like ammonia. That's crazy. Someone's blood it truly smelled so strong that, like, you could just walk into the room like, yo. <laughs> it stinks. It just stinks. <laughs> so then the head nurse is shook. He's like, there's no fucking way. Nigga, come, come in here. He calls the doctor. <laughs> Sniff on yourself and tell me what's possible or not, bro. He then calls the doctor and is like, Sir, you're not gonna believe this shit. But this lady's blood smells like ammonia. And the doctor's like, You're, not you're lying. This. Real talk, you're lying. He pulls up, and you know what this man does? He takes the syringe. Don't tell me he puts it in his mouth. No, ew. Oh. Why I don't know. I don't know. I automatically thought you were going to say something nasty, bro. It's not nasty, but it's weird. What? This man truly takes the syringe out of this lady's arm and sniffs it. He dead went. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hold Come you. Again? I had to read that like six times. Because... I couldn't believe that this dude truly took the needle out the lady's arm and went, wow, yeah. (laughs) Who's dumbass? What's the name of this doctor? I'm going to butcher this name. I'm so sorry. You know what? No, I'm not sorry. You're dumb as fuck. (laughs) Dr. Gorchinski. Well, Dr. (laughs) Gorchinski, you are a dumbass. Who the fuck goes to someone's blood? Wait, he didn't die from this, did he? No, no, oh, no. Okay. He's alive. Well, if you would have died, that would have been really bad on your fault. Like, imagine, like, he has a family and a wife at home. And then... You this man call- truly threw it all to the Right, dust. and then you, she gets a call from the hospital. It's like, hey, I'm sorry. Your husband passed away. Oh, my God, how? So he's decided to sniff a patient's blood. And it killed him. <laughs> what? Real talking decisions, bro. Like, 
make but better choices. You're a doctor. There's like there's diseases that are airborne. Right. And your ass thinks, let me sniff the fucking needle. You know, fuck it. You just thought this was hey, this is a good idea. Right. Th- this was the peak of your fucking career. Sniffing the needle. Like <laughs> choices, my guy. Choices. <laughs> so after this happens, uh the nurse that took the blood originally, mm-hmm. she collapses on the ground. Which I would too if the fucking room smelled like ammonia. Oh, but she shit. collapses. And the doctor's basically like, um, give her some water and just like give her some air, please. Because his whole thing was maybe it is just the ammonia smell. My thing is, even if the, he thought it was just because of the pneumonia spell, he thought that was normal? Like, bro. Like, he did not take no... No precautions. Hard, precautions after that? After, after so that. then, the doctor gets up, and he's basically like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't be in this room right now. Smart. That's the smartest decision I heard. But, on the way out of the room, he gets dizzy. Oop, there goes him. <laughs> he gets really dizzy. And he collapses. And he the way he collapses, no one notices though, because he's still kinda like aware. You know you like half collapse. Yeah. So he kinda catches himself and he goes to like the closest nurse's nurse's station. And he sits down. The minute he sits down, this man, the way he described it was his his body was convulsing. Like he was having a seizure, but he wasn't having a seizure. That's terrifying. And he said that at some point he lost full consciousness of his body. Yo, that like, is he was awake but couldn't control any of his movements. Crazy. So while this is happening though, he's like mentally thinking to himself, like, oh fuck. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have sniffed the syringe. I mean, you don't say. <laughs> Like, that's not common sense, you know? Right. But my thing is, though, if he was quick to, si- to sniff the syringe, what type of man do you think this guy is? You make some questionable choices. Do you think that before he became a doctor, he was a heroin addict? I mean... And that's why he's out here sniffing needles? I mean, it's not too far of a stretch. It could be. Like, you're definitely a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, you think he's the type of guy to, like, sniff underwear? I mean, if you sniff in needles... Sniffing, you have to start somewhere. Yeah, like, sniffing underwear is, like, not as bad compared to, like, going to someone and sniffing someone's blood. Like, all you do is gonna get a bad stink of underwear. You know, that's not gonna kill you. Collapses. The doctor. Mm-hmm. So, while this is happening, I think ten more of, of the workers in the hospital collapse. Wait, how? They're not with the girl. They were on the area. Oh, okay. Damn, what the fuck the smell was that? That those people in the area was able to So, know? the cops, when they came to, like, investigate what was happening, they didn't know if the people collapsed from the actual smell or if it was, like, that it was, like, mass hysteria. Oh, like, people were panicking and fainting? Yeah. Like, they didn't know if it was maybe just... People see others collapsing, so now they're going to be like, oh my god, I feel the symptoms. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Monkey see, monkey do. Mm-hmm. So, that's what they said. And the hospital's like, yeah, no, this isn't okay. <laughs> I would hope so. We need to quarantine this woman. Like, isolate her. Uh-huh. Because our workers are passing out. They do the whole process to make sure she's, like, isolated. So they... They put her in, like, an area where the, like, they could change, like, the air temperature. They usually use rooms like that for people with tuberculosis. Okay. But they put her in there because they're, like, we don't know what you have, but whatever you have is, like... Crazy contagious. So Crazy contagious, so we're not doing this. And then the hospital's, like, okay, so no one's entering the fucking area until the fucking... People come to figure out what's the contagion. Kudos to you guys for making smart decisions. <laughs> right. Because, guy, 
That sniffed it clearly. <laughs> Gorchinski. <laughs> yeah, that doctor clearly wasn't gonna make this decision. Since this isn't though their first time like having a patient that's like isolation to this point, they're just like they're not really stressing it. They're just like, hey, put her away and that's it. You're not stressing this. This lady blood smells like bleach and knocked out people. It's because apparently this is not the first time they had a case like this where someone's blood smelled like bleach. It just didn't do it to the <laughs> In what situation has someone's split blood smell like bleach? And yeah, we're like, this is normal. This is just a regular Tuesday. We know what to do. Like, how? I mean, kudos that you know what to do. But <laughs> why do you know what to do? They never explained it. They never explained why they know how to do it? Nope. They just said, hey, this is not the first time that some shit like this has happened. We're prepared. Cool. I that's guess all. that's um, how you say that's distilled information. Top secret. That's a good talk, I guess. <laughs> my thing is my concern to the people that live in your area in California. Facts. Like this isn't what like the some. Ha- this isn't like a foreign country. On some this is trip. California. What the fuck is happening in California? My thing is, don't we ask that question every year? <laughs> That's true. What the fuck is happening in California? <laughs> you are drugs. There's always some shit happening in California. No disrespect to you guys. Y'all just have a lot going on. They're probably looking at New York like says y'all. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, okay. We just got to get this lady alone and just make sure no one goes in there unless they have a hazmat suit. Regular hospital protocol. After this happens, some of the patients waiting in the ER start collapsing. Ooh, and they're cool. like, yeah, we got a problem. Then they decide, let's evacuate the area. I mean, I would fucking hope so. I don't know why that wasn't the first thought. I thought y'all dealt with this before. Right, I thought you said y'all were prepared for a situation like this. Clearly, y'all were not. But sadly, after this took place, Ms. Ramirez had passed away. Oh, so she did die. Yeah, she passed away at at 8.50 p.m. So this whole fiasco is like 35 minutes. Imagine trying to tell that story to your family. Like, how did she die? Well, let me tell you. Yo... That's a fact. Like, how did they deal with this? My thing is, I'm still on the fact that the doctor really sniffed us. <laughs> you and I both. You wanna be a, I really, like, like a special type of stupid. Like, really, really. How was his wife beat his ass when he came home? <laughs> like, you <laughs> stupid son of a bitch. How the fuck are you sniffing people's blood? She oh. comes to the fucking, she comes to like sick you. And she's like, my dear husband, why are you dying? Oh my god, the fucking couple from Black Clover. <laughs> I miss you so much. You stupid to know you ever do that to me again. So after these crazy 30 minutes, they basically get the highest. It's basically like the people who look for diseases. Oh, like the health, um, the, the people that help with the pandemic. like that. Yeah, too? like them. And they're like, you need to autopsy this woman because what the fuck was that? They basically put this woman in a body bag with like a special tag that's basically like contaminated. Good. Make it as known as possible that like you will die. (laughs) Right. I would have put like a whole warning label, like warning. This product has this, 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 and this. Fast. Do not open. He autopsy her body. And that's when they found out that she had cancer. Do they think the cancer caused her blood to smell like um, pneumonia? So at this point, they really don't fucking know what's happening. Because even with the autopsy, they're like, yeah, um, we don't fucking know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, ladies Um, and gentlemen. Like, (laughs) I don't know. know. We don't fucking know. We really don't know. Now the hospital's like, So you don't know, so what the fuck are we supposed to do? 
Um, and they're like, uh, decontaminate the area, and we're going to figure some shit out. And in the meantime, time. we're going to lie to the people. Real talk lie to the people. And say, we got everything under control. They never have anything under control. <laughs> so basically, right, because she has cancer, she found, like, what, you know, like how they say super pills? Okay. She found a super pill that was basically supposed to demure her symptoms. Okay. Oh, but it didn't. It, Not really. It increased the, her her acid in her, and that's why her blood smelled? So, in her blood, the chemical basically became a type of sulfate. So, oh, So, they found shit. out that she was having a heart attack. Now, when you have a heart attack, your body temperature gets hot. Right, yeah. So, the sulfate got heated up. And then hospitals keep the ER cold. Also, oh, so did her body like not know what to do? So when they re- like when they opened up her vein so they could get the blood out, the sulfate that was already heated up came to the cold. Oh. So when that happens, right, it becomes dimethyl sulfate, which is used for chemical warfare. Bitch became a weapon. She was literally a weapon because since the sulfate got heated up. And then brought to the cold, you automatically changed its compound. So now it's the warfare agent. Yo, what's crazy that, like, that blood could do so much shit. Because, like, you know with the fucking Pizzagate theory, it's that celebrities scare the kids and so they could, oh, like, for drink. adrenochrome. Yeah, and they get a fucking high off of it. With this shit, she fucking, like, her blood got, like, transferred, like, all mixy and then... Got into the cold and was like, guess what we're doing today? We are now a chemical weapon. Bro. Like, that's fucking crazy. Like, the, your, the, your, your blood could literally do so much shit. That's true. And then, like, not only that, it's also the biggest carrier of any disease. That's true. Like... Blood is scary. Yeah. <laughs> blood is scary. Like blood is fucking scary. Let's talk about that. <laughs> we are filled with a fucking... Thi- we're filled with something that could be a chemical war. Like chemical warfare agent. And that could get people high. And that could get people high. The stuff that her body made is actually really fucking dangerous. And if you want to know how dangerous... It is. How do you rem- dangerous is it? Do you remember our dumbass friend, Dr. Korchinski? <laughs> His dumbass friend to a coma. Oh, shit. Yeah. But when he woke up, he had the most symptoms of anyone who was in that area. Oh, shit, he lived? Yeah. That's but crazy. But right, he's so though. That's what happens when you fucking sniff syringes. That is crazy that he lived. Mm-hmm. Well, he wouldn't do so much. He ended up getting hepatitis, vascular necrosis, apnea, and pancreati- pancreatitis. But like, did she have all that? And no. Oh, so, what the fuck? That's how powerful the fucking dimethyl sulfate is. That is crazy. So she didn't even have these diseases? Nope. She just had cancer. And it was so bad. The doctor stood in the hospital for a minute. He One had, that's what you got. Real talk. He had to use a wheelchair. Oh. And then he was on crutches for months. All because he sniffed the syringe. So what did we learn? Yes, children. The point of today's story is don't fucking sniff syringes. Make better choices, please. Please make better choices. We hope that in this world... You have more common sense than Dr. Korchinski. So he's basically put on rehab. Because they're like, wow, you're really sick, sir. Mm-hmm. What's funny so is... he had to tell them why. Yeah. And he did not say what the fuck it was. This man oh. said he was exposed to... So he didn't say, yo, toxic. I sniffed. <laughs> no. A lady syringe. Because he knows damn well they wouldn't have helped him. <laughs> you did this to yourself. They were looking at him like, you stupid fuck. Who told you to do that? Real talk, who told you to do that? Real talk, who told you to do that? Because I know that wasn't in your training. 
Whatever college he graduated from is disgusting. Right. Like, you just brought shame. He didn't tell them at all what the fuck went down. I wonder why he didn't tell them. <laughs> he probably looked back on the situation like, wow. I'm a dumbass. Not my best decision. So I was going to find out the real reason. I mean, sooner or later, you have to tell them the truth. Oh, because that's true. you can't just keep it to yourself. Because then they're not going to know exactly how to help you. They're going to be like a, um, how the fuck you got here? Like, based on what you're telling me. <laughs> based on what you're telling me, you're going to die because of stupidity. That's what I mean. That you are a grade A dumbass. <laughs> and maybe you should get your doctoral degree revoked. Not definitely. But so they do all this, right? Uh-huh. So, apparently, to get all of her information together as to what happened actually in that room, it took nine months. I just want to be in the room where it happened. Literally, during those nine months, it was like back and forth lawsuits. Lawsuits on what? What the fuck are they suing? People were suing the hospital for exposure. Oh, I mean... I guess. And the hospital was like, listen. Literally, the people were like, so we're suing you because um, you exposed us to like some toxic shit. You know? And um, see, I don't just collapse out of nowhere in my house. <laughs> this is not so, one of my issues. Right. I went there for a fucking stubbed toe. <laughs> I came out collapsed. So you know what? <laughs> I deserve some money. Every day. I Did mean, they I don't get blame money? <laughs> No, they lost. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so there's a bunch of lawsuits going on. And the hospital's like, listen, guys. Listen, you Linda. need to leave me alone. <laughs> because I am trying to figure out why this woman died 30 right. minutes after coming in. Right. And like, we're so sorry, but right now you're not the priority. Did the family get any, like... Money or anything from this? So that was another lawsuit that took place. The money was like, so you couldn't save our mom. And um, we deserve collateral for that. But, um, and the hospital was basically like, um, well, your mother just died. So like, no, because she came into our hospital on some shit. <laughs> Listen, our people collapsed because of her right so like, like i'm sorry for your loss but so like we're so sorry but like you want to talk about collateral um our doctor has hepatitis it's their doctor's fault it is but the family don't know that <laughs> that girl was 110 percent your doctor's fault so they're going through all these lawsuits and basically the hospital's like listen we need a moment please <laughs> like we're trying to figure out what happened to this lady and because we're trying to tell her family what exactly happened. Because we don't know. And finally, nine months later, the place that did her autopsy was basically like, they explained the dimethyl sulfate situation. And they were like, so yeah, so that's why you guys were collapsing. However, the amount of people that collapsed, they like the people that were trying to sue them, the place would be like, yeah, they're bullshitting. Oh, they collapsed because of hysteria. But those that were in the room... Collapsed because of the blood. Y'all collapsed really because of the blood. So, if you were not in the room, shut the fuck up. This woman was 31 years old when all this happened. And she had one daughter. Oh. So, after this takes place... The saddest part was that because they didn't know like what was with her blood basically the the daughter's like she couldn't see her mom when she died because oh, immediately the immediate moment her mom died she was put in a body bag and taken away oh right because she was contaminated they did her the most was that it literally took them nine months to tell her like hey this is the reason your mother passed away Cause for that whole nine months, all they kept telling her was her cancer played a part in it. 
But my thing is, though, that's all they knew. But her whole thing... Like, what do you want them to do? She was just upset because her whole thing was, like... She felt like they... Like, it shouldn't have taken nine months. And they were just like, listen, like... We're doing our best. We don't know what what you want us to tell you. Like, because... Keep in mind, their whole logic was, why were you taking a magic pill? You have cancer. Just do what you gotta do. Oh, wait, that pill wasn't, like, subscribed to them or anything? No. Or at least that's what the articles say. You know, I read like five different articles and they all said that it wasn't prescribed. It could have been. They don't really know. So, what's weird though is they never explained where her husband is. Was she even married? Apparently at that point she was. Oh. So, you know, I read like five different articles and they all said that it wasn't prescribed. It could have been. They don't really know. So for those nine months, though, it was an open case. And no one knew. And no one knew what happened. That's... I feel so bad for her. Mm-hmm. I think the, the daughter even tried to sue the pill company that her mom got the pills from. And they were like, listen. We didn't put a gun to your mom's head. And said, buy the bill. She bought the bill. My thing is, though, did they say the side effects? You know, they didn't say that in the story. Because, like, if they didn't list the side effects to this fucking pill, then the daughters would never right to sue. That is true. And for a really long time, even though it was, like, buzzing around in California, other states didn't know for a while. Like, what happened to the lady? I mean, when did this happen? This happened in 1994. I mean, there was no social media. Yeah, I won't say that's not like someone could have been like, like, reshared a fucking story on Facebook or something. Could shit. you imagine that? Yo. You know, I just thought about why couldn't the place that sold the pill to her get sued? They definitely could. Because my thing is, isn't that false advertising? Because you made her situation worse. And my thing was, like, did they advertise it to, like, help cure your cancer? Yeah. Nah, bro. And my thing's like, you shouldn't be taking anything that's not prescribed to you. Right. But, like, the fact that, like, the side effects weren't listed in the back. And then, like, they should take some accountability for their actions, you know? Yeah, because my thing is, like, she trusted your brand, you know? Like, mm-hmm. you sold it to her. So, long story short, children. Sadly, Gloria passed away that night. And all of this was because of a special pill. So moral of the story, please don't take pills that are not prescribed to you. And even if they are prescribed to you, look them up. Make like, so you know the symptoms. Right. Don't just take random pills just because right. someone says to. And honestly, to Gloria's family, I'm so sorry that that happened to you. Cause right. that so must have been a that. no. That must have been like a really fucked situation. Like imagine that. Your mom was just fine. She was a little sick. Goes to the hospital. Boom. 30 minutes later, like, so your mom died. So that's what? Like, I mind you, like, it took nine months to, on top of that, to find out why your mom died. Right. This whole time, the hospital was like, it was her cancer. And you're like, but she... And you found out her cancer didn't even spread. Bro, she got, like, they found out she had cancer, like, last week. What are you talking about? And she was only 31. 31 with cancer. I'm sorry, Gloria. And another moral of the story is don't go around sniffing needles like Dr. Guczynski. <laughs> Make better choices. My thing is, if watching this video, disclaimer, if you get the idea of sniffing needles, that is not on That this. is not our fucking fault, Because we've said like 10 times in this video, don't, don't sniff do needles. Don't sniff needles. Don't sniff needles. Say it with me. Don't sniff needles. Like... Don't sniff fucking needles. Don't share your needles. That too. With sharing needles. <laughs> Dr. Gochinski. General question. What the fuck? Like, what is what to say? Last week we had to tell you not to sacrifice your children. Today we gotta tell you not to sniff needles. Like. Guys, like. Choices. Choice. Dr. Gochinski, I'm so sorry you have hepatitis. I'm not. But that's your fault. Like, that's I'm really not. your fault. Like, you know why I don't have hepatitis? 
Cause I'll go around <laughs> Sniffing needles Like This man truly took it out of her arm And went No they said deep whiff mm -hmm. So that should What would that mean So Don't sniff needles <laughs> Stay spooky Right